before this chapter begins, I just want to say that some of the stuff of such as suggestive topics and and stuff being mentioned in this chapter, it may be up disturbing or upsetting for some viewers. Now, for those who get triggered by any of these topics in this chapter, I suggest you click off this video now. Now, with that being said, let's begin. The trip home from the Prenect was less slumber and filled with more hope than the trip there. Everyone understood that there was no guarantee that everything was going to work out the way they wanted to, but Lincoln and his family felt more ho hopeful that they did it prior to the meeting with the detectives. Still, no one said a word on the way back home. They exchanged small smiles and gave each other a reassuring glances, but everyone had the same thing on their mind, and they knew that what the others knew what they were thinking. The trip home didn't seem to take as long as a trip to the Pernect, mainly due to the fact that most of the loud children had fallen asleep on the way home, with the exception of Lori and Luna. They had spent the entire trip looking down at Lincoln, who had fallen asleep between them and was leaning his head against Lori's left side. Lori wrapped her arm around Lincoln and leaned on the side of her head atop to her brothers. Luna grabbed Lincoln's hand and squeezed it tight and leaned against his side. That wasn't against Lori's. Both girls had closed their eyes and told themselves that everything was going to be okay and that Lincoln was going to be okay before drifting off to sleep like the rest of the siblings. This way they knew they'd be safe. Once Vanzilla came to a squeaky stop in the driveway of the Louds' residence, Rita turned her head to tell their children that they were home. Hey everyone, we're home. Lori was the first one to stir. Uh, what mom? Lori asked in a, still in a daze. Rita let a small laugh. <laughs> I said we're home, sweetie. Can you help me and your father get everyone inside? Rita asked her eldest sister's daughter. Lori rubbed her eyes. Yeah, Mom, I'll wake Luna up and then we'll get everyone inside, said Lori. Rita smiled at Lori. Thank you, Lori. As her and Lynn opened their respective doors and made their way inside to where they would try and get some much-needed sleep, Lori nudged Luna. Hey, Luna, I need you to wake you, you to wake up, Lori exclaimed. Luna stirred slightly. Uh, what's going on, dude? Luna asked Lori with a yawn. Mom asked if we could help get everyone inside. It looks like we all fell asleep, Lori explained. Luna then looked at to see everyone asleep. Well, looks like you're right, Lori. Man, and we were all wide awake earlier, too, said Luna. Lori nodded in agreement. Yeah, I know what you mean, and didn't think any of us would get any sleep after this morning, said Lori. Yeah, pretty heavy this morning, but we should get, get our siblings in the house, said Luna. Lori and Luna unbuckled their seatbelts and began the process of waking up their siblings to tell them that they were home and that it would feel better for them to sleep in their own beds. Lenny, Luann, and Lynn were the first ones. Lori and Luna decided to wake up, mainly to get up with carrying the younger ones into the house. It's better to let them sleep and then wait and wake up on their own. Lola, Lana, and Lisa and Lily could be a little cranky when they were awoken from deep slumber. Once old, all the older, loud children ganged their bearings, they carried each of the younger ones with the exception of Lynn. Even being as tired as she was, she decided it was her best way to get Lucy to her their room and was to carry her over her shoulders. Lori was about to tell Lynn not to carry Lucy that way, but stopped herself as long as Lucy made it her way to her bedroom unharmed. Then, I guess it really doesn't really matter how she gets there. Everyone has their own methods, she thought. Luann picked up Lisa and carried the youngest loud, second youngest loud to the house. Luna unbuckled Lily from her car seat and picked Lily up, then looked over at Lori. Hey, Lori, I'll run the little stir inside and then come back for Lincoln, Luna exclaimed. Lori unbuckled the twins and then looked at Luna. Okay, I think I can get both Lola and Lana in the house by myself, Lori said as she scooped up the youngest sister in their arms. Nice muscle, sis, Lola, Lana, Luna jokingly complimented her sister. Lori then rolled her eyes and let a small laugh. <laughs> Just get Lily inside and come back out for Lincoln, okay, said Lori. 
Luna uh, stuck out her tongue at, and Lori and started walking her way towards the house to place Lily in her crib. Lori soon followed suit with Luna, Mayor made her way in the house and then up the stairs to place Lola and Lana in their beds so they could get continued to sleep in more comfortable conditions. Once Lo- Luna had made their way up the stairs, she opened the door to Lily and Lisa's room to see the genius of the loud family sound asleep. Luna then turned to the corner and gently placed Lily in her crib. Luna gave Lily a warm smile and gently kissed the top of her head before leaving the room and closing the door behind her. At the same time, Lori walked out of the twins' room as cautiously as she could. Luna then looked at Lori. They still out to count? Luna asked her older sister. Lori looked back at Luna. Yeah, I can't blame them, though. Everyone's had a rough morning, Lori expressed. Luna nodded in agreement. I hear that, dude. I'm going to get Lincoln before he wakes up and sees everyone gone, Luna exclaimed. Lori then made their way to the stairs. I'll give you a hand, said Lori. It had only been a few hours, but looking at Lori and Luna, you'd really think they'd be up for a week straight, running a marathon. They were exhausted, and you could see every ounce of fatigue on their faces. They didn't mean need to take their time walking down the stairs, but their exhaustion was finally catching up to them. Learning the tragedy that had been falling on their brother, being up before 9 o'clock to go to the police station and to listen to their brother's recount of what happened to him, with barely sleeping last night, was really starting to calm them down. Once they had finally reached, reached the bottom of the stairs, they continued their short journey through the living room until they reached the door. They were about to walk outside when they heard a yell coming from the direction of Van Zilla. Lori and Luna's eyes became wide as dinner plates. Lori and Luna looked at each other. Shit! Lincoln! Both sisters said in an illusion. Lori and Luna ran out the front door. They hadn't shut it yet after everyone was inside, and they darted their way towards Van Zilla. Luna wasn't going to waste any more time with the steps, leaning down to the front yard and hurtled towards the railing that led the front porch while Lori ran down the steps as quickly as she could. Luna was the first one to reach the family van and almost ripped off the door how hard she pulled on the handle. It was clear to think through all the fear of the adrenaline, but Luna knew she was looking for her brother, and nothing else mattered. Lori was right beside Luna when she yanked the door to Van Zilla and searched for Lincoln just like her younger sister, but they saw he wasn't in the seat they had left him. They panicked and started sweating, wondering where he could have gone. Luna then crawled, crawled into the Van Zilla and started looking under the cover seats when she noticed there was something in the back seat. Luna then stood up and hold, hopped over the seats until she reached to the bench in the very back. I think he's back here, sis, Luna told Lori. Lori then looked at the back of Vanzilla. Are you sure? I don't see him, Lori asked Luna. Once Luna reached the back seat, she crashed down to her knees. Yeah, I saw something under the seat, Luna ex- no, explained. A confused look grew on Lori's face. Under the seat? Lori questioned. Luna then lowered her head to see her suspicions were correct. Hey, Link, what are you doing under there? Luna asked. The object underneath the bench rolled to reveal that it was indeed Lincoln. Luna? Lincoln asked with obvious fear in his voice and tears streaming down his face. The look of terror Luna saw on her brother's face made her body tremble with fear. Lincoln, what happened? Lori, it's him! Luna asked out of instinct as she reached under the bench and pulled her brother out from under it. Lori then looked at her with fear in her eyes. Lincoln, what's wrong? Lori asked instinctively as she crawled into Vanzilla. Lincoln immediately wrapped Luna in a tight embrace. I woke up and everyone was gone and I didn't know where I was or where everyone went. Lincoln explained through his tears. Luna returned the hug her brother's embrace as tightly as she could without hurting him. Link, I'm I'm so sorry. Everyone fell asleep on the way home and we, we were helping to get everyone inside, Luna explained. Lori then reached over and embraced both Luna and Lincoln. I promise we are literally coming back for you. I swear we were, Lori reassured her brother. Lincoln lifted his head up. I just got really, really scared and and I didn't know where I was. I, I don't even remember falling asleep, said Lincoln. Luna then looked at Lincoln. It's okay, dude. We shouldn't have left you alone, Luna expressed with obvious regret in her voice. Lori kissed the top of Lincoln's head. 
We shouldn't have, and I'm sorry we did, said Lori. Lincoln then moved his arm and was now embracing both of the sisters. I'm, I'm so sorry for m making you worry. I just didn't want to be left by myself right now. Last time I was, I, I... Lincoln was cut off by Luna. You don't need to apologize, bro, Luna reassured. We are going to be by your side through all of this, and we are never going to let you down like, like just like that, ever again, Luna expressed. Lori not in agreement. Every step of the way, Lincoln, Lori repeated Luna's promise. After a few seconds, Lincoln looked up. Thank, thank you. I love you both, Lincoln said to his sisters. I love you too, Lincoln. Lori and Luna sent an illusion, without even thinking. Even though all three of the loud children were more than willing to stay in Vanzilla, embracing each other, they all knew that they needed to get inside, like the rest of the family, to get some much-needed sleep. Lori and Luna and Lincoln broke from their embrace again, the short trek, even though the fatigue had made them feel like the exact opposite to their respective bedrooms to hopefully sleep for the next year. Once inside, Luna informed her siblings that she was just going to crash into the living room as she proceeded to collapse and land on the family sofa with a quiet thud. Lori and Lincoln laughed at their sister, becoming instantly emotionless when she hit the couch. Everyone walking came by, though, thought that it was, she was a corpse, but as they made their way up the stairs to the sanctuary, that was their bedrooms. Once at the top of the stairs, Lori led down and gave Lincoln a hug and wished him a good night and kissed him on the top of his head. Lincoln returned to his sister's embrace and he also wished her a good night and this made their way to his bedroom. After Lincoln entered his bedroom, he changed into his pajamas, pulled the covers back on his bed, and then tucked himself and hoped for a good long rest. And for the first time in almost 24 hours, Lincoln wasn't afraid to be by himself. Talking to the detectives, knowing that his family behind him through all of this, and having his two older sisters promise to always be there for him, really gave him off a feeling of security and confidence, though he thought he had lost. He started to feel more optimistic about the outcome of the situation, and he was going to be safe from his abuser from now on if only if you were that lucky. When Lincoln awoke from, a, from his peaceful sleep at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, he was surprisingly well rested, given that he didn't sleep all well the night before. He had been up early in the morning and reaccounting his abuse from two separate occasions. He didn't intend on sleeping that long, but today was the day prior. He had drained him off every ounce of energy he had, had finally caught up to his body. He opened his eyes up, sat up, and stretched his whole body. While letting out a yawn, he was wondering if anyone else was up. But once his ears had finally adjusted, he could hear some of his family members talking outside the door. Lincoln decided to get up and change into his regular clothes to see who was outside his room. Lincoln opened the door to see his mom and his older sister talking to each other. Oh, hey, mom. Hey, Lori, Lincoln said as he greeted his mom and sister. Both ladies turned their head towards Lincoln. Oh, hey, Lincoln, Lori responded in enthusiastically. Oh, Lincoln, you're awake. That's great, Lincoln's mother said perungently. Lincoln gave him a puzzled look. Yeah, I was pretty tired. I didn't think I'd ever wake up, Lincoln said jokingly. Lori turned her head away. Don't get my hopes up, Lori said under her breath. What? Lincoln asked. Lori then turned back to face her brother. Oh, it's just nothing. Just needed to clear my throat. Lori lied to Lincoln as she gave him a forced smile. Lincoln gave Lori a confused look. Oh, I thought you said something. Lori, is everything okay? Lincoln tried to ask his sister before he was cut off by his mother. Lincoln, your sister and I are talking right now. Please stop interrupting and go play a video game or something. Rita told her son as she and Lori turned their backs to him. A stunned look fell over Lincoln's face. Uh, okay, I guess. I'll just go downstairs then. Lincoln proclaimed as he made his way downstairs. Lori looked over his shoulder. It's about time he took the hint, Lori proclaimed. Rita nodded in agreement. I knowed I never had he'd leave, but it was a good one, though, when you said you needed to clear your throat, said Rita with a devilish smile. Lori gave her mother her own devilish smirk. I just couldn't help myself. Lincoln not waking up after is nice, though, Lori expressed. 
Rita then nodded in agreement. You could say that again, Rita exclaimed with a snicker. Lincoln then slowly made his way down to the living room, where he saw his older sisters, Lynn and Lenny, on the couch. Oh, hey, girls, Lincoln greeted his older sisters. Lenny turned to Lynn. Like, did you hear something, Lynn? Lenny asked Lynn, purposely ignoring Lincoln. Lynn kept heading straight to their TV. Didn't hear anything, probably just a wind, Lynn responded. Lenny turned her back towards the TV. Oh, you're probably right, Lenny, Nay answered. Lincoln gave his both his sisters a confused look. Uh, Lynn? Lenny? That was me. I said hi, Lincoln repeated. Lynn picked up the remote and turned on the volume up. Ah, that's better, Lynn said out loud. Lenny nodded in agreement. Oh, yes. That's like totes better, Lynn, Lenny added. Lincoln scratched the back of his head. Well, I'm going to go to the kitchen and get a snack then, Lincoln said awkwardly. Lee. He then turned around and started walking towards the kitchen. Lincoln shook his head in confusion. Okay, what's going on? First mom and Lori can't get rid of me fast enough, and now Lynn and Lenny act like I don't even exist? What is even going on? Lincoln asked himself. Lincoln stopped at the first hole at the entrance to the kitchen when he heard a familiar voice he all knew too well. It was his father, and from what Lincoln could tell, his father was talking to someone. Even laughing from them and here and there, he couldn't make out the other voice. He had admitted that it sounded familiar, since he was already nearby his way to the kitchen. He started to see who the mystery voice belonged to, but there was something in that planet that could have prepared Lincoln, who laid his eyes on when he turned to the corner to see who his father was talking to. His heart sank to his feet, and all the color drained from his face. He was petrified. Everyone was walking by. They thought Lincoln just had laid his eyes on them, on the demon to collect his, his very souls. And if you ask Lincoln, that's exactly who was standing in the kitchen talking to his father. It was his teacher, his abuser, his tormentor, his own personal devil, Miss Johnson. Lincoln then looked at her fa his father in terror. D -d 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 Dad? Lincoln managed to say through his terror. Lincoln's father turned his head with, to his son with a scowl. Oh, Lincoln, you're well, finally awake. It's about time, Lynn Sr. said almost angrily. Miss Johnson turned towards Lincoln with a sinister grin. Oh, if it isn't my favorite student. Or at least you were, until I found out you're a little you're just a little liar, Miss Johnson exclaimed. Lincoln's shock grew even stronger. What what are you talking about? Lincoln stammered. Lynn Star Sr. started walking towards Lincoln. Don't play dumb, Lincoln. Miss Johnson explained everything to us, said Lynn Sr. Lincoln then started to back away from his father until he backed into the kitchen wall. Explain what, Dad? Lincoln asked. Miss Johnson stepped forward. About how you lied about what happened yesterday and you tried to make me out to be a horrible monster, Miss Johnson said devilishly. Lynn Senior stopped directly in front of Lincoln. That's right. And all because you didn't want to find out that you failed the test, your teacher was nice enough to let you take it the second time, Lynn Senior said angrily. Tears were starting to stream down Lincoln's face. I didn't lie. I promise I didn't, Lincoln proclaimed as his innocence. Lynn Sr. then reached out and gripped Lincoln's arm. That's it. I've had enough of your lies, Lincoln. I'm going to make you wish you never lied in the first place, Lynn Sr. threatened as he pulled Lincoln in the direction of the living room. Lincoln turned his head to see Miss Johnson smiling and waving at him, almost as if she knew what was going to happen and was going to relish every moment whatever Lincoln was about to endure. Lincoln's fear was growing by the second, and with every inch of his father dragging him, his grip tightening with every step. Wondering what was going to happen when his family finally let him go, Lynn Sr. pulled Lincoln into the direction of the stairs, once the, into the living room, and started to pull his son up to the stairs to the second level, berating his son with each step, and cursing the day he was born, and wishing that he and his wife had another daughter on that day. Each word broke. The more and more of Lincoln's already shattered heart. Lincoln never thought of anything could be worse than what he endured. Every word that his father uttered cut like the sharpest knife. Once at the top of the stairs, Lynn Sr. turned right and made his way towards Lincoln's bedroom and opened the door once he made it there at the end of the hallway with Lincoln in the toe. Lynn Sr. grabbed the doorknob to Lincoln's bedroom 
and free his hand and yank the door open with full force off of its hinges to put a hole in the adjacent wall. He shoved Lincoln into his bedroom very forcefully. Lincoln stumbled and fell upon his bedroom door room floor. Dad, I'm not lying. Please believe me. Lincoln begged through his father with tears. Lynn Sr. shook his head in annoyance. I don't want to hear it, Lincoln. In fact, none of us do. We believed you, and it almost cost an innocent woman everything. Lynn Sr. expressed through disgust. Lynn S Lincoln then stood up. Dad, please! Lincoln begged once more. Lynn Sr. slammed the bedroom door shut. Your lies were going to send someone away for a long time. I think it's only fair if you suffer the same consequences, Lynn Sr. said as he locked the bedroom door. Lincoln then ran over to his doorknob and turned the door erratically. Please, I'm not lying. Please believe me. Lincoln begged as he pounded on the door and sank to his knees. Lincoln then shot up from his bed. I'm not lying. Please, Lincoln shouted. Lincoln was breathing heavily, sweat pouring from his face. He looked around and he saw that he was in his bedroom with the lights on, and he was still in his pajamas. It was a nightmare. He got up and stumbled over to his dresser and tilted his head so he could get a look in the mirror. He was as pale as a sheet and was crying and shaking almost uncontrollably. He saw through his eyes were bloodshot and his tears were streaming down his face. His breathing started to get heavier and heavier, and after a brief second, he let out a horrendous cry that you only hear from the mouth of the most tortured soul. Lincoln finally reached to his breaking point, and he couldn't sleep without thinking of his teacher was going to come and make his life even worse than it already was, and torture him even more than she already had. He turned around and slid down, down the floor, leaning against the back against the dresser, gripping his hair as if almost as hard as he could, wondered if it was all worth it, or if he'd be safe again. He wanted to give up. He wanted all the pain to end. He wanted to feel safe. He wanted to be at peace, and just wanted all of this to end once and for all, so bad that he had an idea how to accomplish it. Please don't do it, Lincoln. Lincoln stood up and searched his dresser. I know it's here. I'll never leave it anywhere but here. There it is, Lincoln said to himself through his tears. While ruffling through the objects of this dresser was a scalpel. He always used it and puts his models together. At the same time he found the scalpel, a Lincoln's bedroom door flew open. Lincoln, you okay, bro? I heard a scream, Luna said as she entered her brother's bedroom. Lincoln then turned to face his sister. Tears were streaming down his face. She's coming for me, Luna. I'm not safe anywhere, not even in my dreams. I just want it to end, Lincoln then proclaimed as he raised the scalpel to the front of his neck. Luna's eyes widened. Lincoln, don't! Luna yelled as she, he lunged forward and were towards her brother with fast reflexes. Luna was able to grab Lincoln's wrists, the one connected to the hand to hold the scalpel, turned his wrist away from her and recollectively re and pushed him against the wall. Drop it, Lincoln, Luna commanded. Luna looked at his sister in the eyes and dropped the scalpel. I just want the pain to go away, Luna, Lincoln expressed and she started crying. Luna then brought her brother to a tight embrace. It's Will, Lincoln, but not like this. Please don't ever do anything like that again. Luna begged her brother as tears began to stream down her face. Both siblings fell to their knees and they continued their embrace onto the floor of Lincoln's bedroom. Luna knew that her brother wasn't doing well but she never imagined that she would push him to do the unthinkable. Lincoln's pain and his fear ran deeper for than everyone could have imagined. It was only going to get worse by the moment. He wasn't going to start feeling like he was, was nowhere where he would be safe. If you would have asked this to Luna in the morning, how confident would she be to find her brother to recover from his abuse? She would have told him you more confident than ever, but now she didn't know what to think. Her brother was just trying to take his own life, and she almost witnessed her brother take his own life. If she hadn't heard his scream and came running, she may have been holding her brother's corpse at that moment. Luna didn't even know what else to do but hold her brother. She wanted to stay there forever and hold her brother, and she'd make sure that she'd always be there to save her for him. She again kept telling herself twice that she had now failed to protect her brother from his teacher, and now, from his own pain, since this all started, she felt like a failure, and she was tired of it. 
Luna then took Lincoln's head from in both her hands and brought it, her eyes together. I'm sorry I couldn't protect you, Lincoln, but I'm going to make sure no one ever hurts you again, Luna promised her brother. Lincoln then lowered his head. I'm sorry, Luna. I'm so sorry, Lincoln apologized. Luna re-embraced her brother. It's okay, Lincoln. It's okay, Luna reassured her brother. She wasn't so sure to believe in herself, though. They both had been broken.